Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. If you recall from the C-Sharp Fundamentals for Absolute Beginner series that I created for Microsoft Virtual Academy a year or two ago, uh, it's also hosted on Channel 9. Near the end of that series, I wanted to demonstrate how events work in C-Sharp. And so to demonstrate that, I created two very different types of applications, but I followed the same workflow and got a similar result. So I created a ASP.NET Web Forms application, and then I turned around and created a WPF, or rather a Windows Presentation Foundation application. And again, I took the same basic steps to create those applications, and I got basically the same result, even though the one result was presented in a web browser and the other was presented in a Windows form. Uh, I, I put a button on the, on the form, you click the button, and uh, we would handle the click event, and we would uh, programmatically change the value of a label control uh, to the word hello world. And uh, so that was a great way for us to not only learn how C Sharp events work, but it was also great because, again, it gave you that confidence that, hey, I know how to, to build one type of application. I can use the same techniques and workflow to build another type of application. And the good news is that you can repurpose that knowledge to create universal Windows platform apps. And so in this lesson, I want to do just that. I want to recreate that same application, a basic Hello World application. Uh, but this time, I'll do it creating a simple universal Windows platform application. And I encourage you to follow along. Now, before you can follow along, you're going to need to make sure that you already have Visual Studio 2015 installed. Any edition will do. Express, Community, or one of the paid editions that's great. And then secondly, you're going to need to make sure that you have the emulators installed, just like we talked about in the previous lesson. And so uh, make sure you, you have that. I'm not going to demonstrate how to do that. Uh, there's plenty of resources online that will explain how to do it. Uh, but assuming that you've got all of that installed and we're ready to go, let's go ahead and get started by creating a new project. A bunch of different ways in Visual Studio to do this. But I'm going to create uh, a new project by clicking on the New Project link in the Start page. That'll open up the New Project dialog in Visual Studio. We want to, on the left-hand side, select Install Templates, Visual C Sharp Windows, Windows Universal. And then in the center, we'll see a series of templates. We want to choose the top one, a blank app, Windows Universal application template. And then I'm going to change the name from whatever the default is to simply Hello World. And we'll click the OK button in the lower right-hand corner. And it'll take Visual Studio a moment or two to get it all set up for us. Okay, so what we want to do first of all is go over to the right hand side into the Solution Explorer window and I want to double click the mainpage.xaml file. It'll open up that file in a special type of designer that has two panes. The top pane is a visual designer and the lower pane is a textual code based designer. It allows us to edit the code that will be used to generate objects on screen. And so the, uh, the language that we'll write in that lower pane is XAML. So I'll refer to this as the XAML editor. And we'll talk about XAML in a video or two from now at length. But in this top pane, you can see that we get a visual representation of our application. And you can see that we're actually looking at uh, a kind of a rendering of how it would look if we were to design our application or run our application on a five inch phone screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Now this is at 300 scale, so it's blow, it blew it up really large so we can see it. A little bit too large, actually. We'll change that in just a moment. Notice that we can also view what our application's user interface would look like in portrait or in landscape mode by toggling the little buttons here at the top. But again, this is a little bit large. We have to scroll around on the screen just to see the entire design surface. So we can make it a little bit smaller by going to the zoom window in the lower left-hand corner. And I'm just going to choose like 33%. Now that won't completely compact it down for our, for our viewing pleasure. However, it makes it much smaller and manageable. 
And what we're going to do uh, is start out by adding some controls onto this designer surface and just to kind of break into exactly how this all works. So over on the left hand side, there should be a little tab sticking out called toolbox. And if you click it, the toolbox window will jettison out from the right hand side. I'm actually going to use this little pin in the upper right hand corner of that window and click it once and that will turn off auto hide. So now that toolbox window is automatically docked over here on the left hand side. And if you don't like the way that it's positioned, you can just again position it any way you want to using uh, your mouse and the little border area between the toolbox and the main area. And you'll notice that if we were to roll up here to the very top that there are a couple of categories of controls that can be added. Common XAML controls or all XAML controls. We'll go through a bunch of these throughout the series. We basically want to work with just some common ones to start off with. So I'm going to drag and drop a button control from the toolbox onto the design surface. So here we go, dragging and dropping. And notice when I do, it drops it right where my mouse cursor was. And hopefully you notice also here in the XAML editor that it added this line of code in line number 11. It created um, a, uh, a tag, which is an opening and closing angle bracket, very similar to what you would see in HTML, and yet this is not HTML, but similar in the sense that you use HTML to lay out uh, the design of a web page. Same is true with XAML. We'll use the XAML programming language to easily lay out uh, the, uh, the various controls and the layout for our application. Notice that we've created a button control and it has a number of different properties like the name of that control, the content of that control, also the alignment, the horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment, and then margin. And that margin, as you can see, is based on here, this little visual uh, view of it, it's 10 pixels from the top and 68 pixels from the left. And so that's where the alignments come into play. The horizontal alignment left, that's what we're aligning to, 68 pixels, however, from that side, and then 10 pixels from the top. And then for the right-hand side and the bottom, well, those are set to zero because we're really not worried about those. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on. However, just notice that there are attributes or properties of the elements that we add um, in our XAML editor. So now if I wanted to change the name of this button, uh, the programmatic name that we'll access it with, I can just call this the click button or click me button. Maybe I'll change that, me button. And I can also change the content here as well by typing in click me into the content area. And notice when I do that, it changes the visual attribute of the button to click me instead of whatever was in there before. Now, there's also a third way that I can make modifications to this object, to this button object. We see it here in the designer, we see it here in the XAML editor, but then also here on the right-hand side in the properties window, we can make changes uh, by finding a property that we want to modify, like for example, the text property or some common properties like the content. And we can change it by just modifying the little property editor and hitting enter on our keyboard. Notice when I did that, it modified not only what we see here in the designer, but then also what we see here in the XAML editor change the content property to the value, click this. And so I guess that's really the first thing that I wanted to, uh, to, to demonstrate was that these are essentially three different views of the same object. One is visual, one is textual, and the other is a property editor. But we can make changes in any of these and they'll show up in the other one. So they're all connected together. The other thing that I wanna do is I'm actually going to change the, the font size. So I'm gonna to go to the text section of the properties window. I'm gonna change this from 11.25 points to, oh, let's scroll down and it's off the screen here, but I'm gonna change it to 48 points. And when I do, you can see uh, the click me button is very large. Now that's not actually what I wanted to do. Let's change this back to like 12 points. All right, that seems reasonable. Instead, what I wanted to do was actually go over here to the text block control in the toolbox I'm gonna drag and drop that onto my design surface as well. You can see now that it also uh, is, is represented on the visual surface. It's here in our XAML editor, and now we can also make changes to it. And for example, change the name to result text 
block. And here's where I wanted to actually change the text property to 48 point. And you can see that it made that, uh, that font very large. Uh, and it's showing currently the text value text block, but I can type anything here and it will be displayed, whoops, it will be displayed then in that text block. And a text block is just basically like a label, somewhere where we, we can put static text. Um, but actually I'm gonna clear this out completely. I'm gonna go to the end of this line and notice that the font size is set to 64. Uh, and you might say, wait a second here. I see that it's 48 point over here in the properties editor, but it's 64 units here in the font size attribute in the XAML editor. I thought those were supposed to be the same. Well, actually they are the same. The XAML editor is rendering values in device independent pixels or rather dips. The properties window is actually representing uh, values in points, which are a fixed size of 1 72nd of an inch. So it's a very complicated topic, but we're gonna revisit this when we take into consideration the various screen sizes and resolutions on the various form factors that Windows 10 will run on uh, as we're building our applications. As you know, you can have a large screen with a low resolution or vice versa. And so units of measurement like inches are kind of irrelevant. Instead, we need a new unit of measurement that accounts for both screen size and resolution to determine the sizes of things like controls that we add to our apps. All right, the next thing that I wanna do is actually select the button control and then over here in the properties window, I'm gonna select this little uh, bolt of lightning uh, button over here and that will show us all of the events that can be handled for the button and the very first one is the click event. So I'm just gonna double click inside of that text box in the property editor and we'll open up the mainpage.xaml.cs file. Now notice here in our solution explorer that the mainpage.xaml is related to the mainpage.xaml.cs file. Uh, they're actually two parts of the same puzzle, uh, two pieces of the same puzzle and we'll talk about that more later. But here what I want to do is whenever somebody clicks the click me button, we want to change the value inside of the result label. So let's set the result text block dot text equals hello world. All right. And now what I want to do is actually see our application running. So I'm going to go up to our toolbar uh, and there's a little green arrow that indicates that we can run the application in debug mode. Notice that I'm gonna be running it on my local machine, but if I use this little drop down arrow, you can see that there are some other options as well, including a simulator and, a remote, and an emulator, as well as a actual physical device. So the first time that we run this, I'm gonna actually just run it on the local machine. And it opens up our application and it's actually quite large, but I'm gonna resize this down. All right. And if we click the click this button, you can see the text hello world appears as we would expect. And so working in debug mode is great because uh, we're able to set breakpoints like we learned about in the C Sharp Fundamentals for Absolute Beginner series and uh, inspect values as the application is currently running. We're able to also uh, see our app, our Windows, our Universal Windows platform app running without having to deploy our app to an actual, actual physical Windows device. It's just running on our desktop. Now for most of this course, I'm gonna be running the app on my local machine like we've done here, because really it's the fastest way to, um, to test what we've done. However, at times I'm gonna to wanna to test on emulators. And so an emulator is a virtual machine that emulates or mimics a physical device. Uh, and that physical device could be a phone or a tablet or even an Xbox, although we don't have that emulator just yet uh, to work with. And now at this time, since I'm using the beta, I can only access actually the phone emulators and then the simulator that is uh, like the Microsoft Surface. So what I wanna do is run our application again, but this time I'm gonna choose this emulator 10.0.1.0 WVGA 4 inch 512 megabyte. 
That specification uh, that I chose, emulator 10.0.1.0 WVGA 4 inch 512 megabyte, it specifies which physical phone that we're going to be emulating. So if we take a look, we can see that our application has been loaded up into this emulator that looks just like a phone. And if I click the click this button, you can see that it actually then displays in the main area. I can also hit the Windows button to go back. And just like a Windows phone, I can view all apps uh, and even see some of the built-in apps uh, in, in the phone. Now, in order to stop debugging using the emulator, I can do one of two things. I can click this little close button in the upper right-hand corner of the emulator. However, you should get in the habit of just leaving the emulator up and running uh, even when you're not debugging. And there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, uh, the emulator is running as a virtual machine and it takes time to essentially reboot, to shut it down and to then to turn it back on. And then secondly, any app data that you save to the phone between debugging sessions will be lost whenever you shut down the simulator. So if you have data that you want to keep around between debugging sessions, do not close down the emulator. The other option you have is to actually click the stop debugging button in the toolbar here, and I'll actually click that. But as you'll see, the emulator is still running. We just go out to the main window screen. And I know that there's a little bit of emulator weirdness here. Uh, eventually, these physical buttons on the phone will work instead of these little software buttons here that they have represented. All right. Actually, I'm going to close this anyway. <laughs> Now, hopefully you're able to see the relationship between the work that we did in the, in the XAML editor and in the design view in the properties window with the work that we did in this code behind file, this main page.xaml.cs file. And you're then actually able to see the result of the work that we did when we ran the application, whether it be in our, on our local machine or in one of the phone emulators. Okay. And so what we'll do is we'll come back in the next lesson and we're going to investigate further uh, what we did, why we did it, and then kind of use this again as a jumping off point uh, for learning more about the Universal Windows Platform uh, API. Okay, so we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.